Hello Gunpla fans, this is Joe of Joe's Gunpla here with another review and today I will be reviewing the 1 to 144 scale high grade uh, Wing Zero Custom and this is the special edition that came out um, in clear and chrome plastic. Uh, the mold is exactly the same as the original release and so is uh, posability and everything else. So, uh, first the kit comes with a sheet of stickers. Uh, the two green circles are for uh, the chest. Uh, let's see, the two here are for the shoulder. These are for the arms. These here are for the skirt armor. These are for the shoulders. Uh, one red for the crotch armor. Uh, the red for the um, chin. The eyes down below. And these here are for sensors on the arms. <coughs> uh, the instruction manual uh, is actually just the original manual, but it, uh, the photos, of course, are of the special edition kit. And on the back here, you see that uh, even in the promo shots, they applied uh, stickers, didn't do any painting, and uh, nub marks are clearly visible on uh, a lot of these parts here. So. Let's get into the actual kit. And we'll start with posability. So the head is on a ball joint. We'll go up and down. A little side to side wobble here. And it won't quite turn 360 because of the shoulder cannons that are in the way. Uh, the arms get everything out of the way here. We'll go 360, but you have to be very careful on this one in particular. The joints in here are very tight. So you want to make sure you're grabbing right at the base of the joint and rotate carefully. Um, the shoulder joints here, or the shoulder armor, is on a hinge. We'll go up and down. Um, if you turn the arm slightly this way, you can get out about 90 degrees. Uh, 360 at the elbow in one bend gives you just about 90 degrees, a little more. The hands are on ball joints, so they wobble around like that, and you can get a 360. Uh, the waist, you get a little bit of side-to-side -side swing. You really have to pop him out quite a bit to get any more than that. Uh, front skirt armor is connected together in the middle and only goes out about that far. Side skirt armor um, hits the torso, so you don't get very far with that either. Um, Legs can only go out that far anyway, and they can go forward only about that far. And back that far before they hit the immobile skirt armor in the back. Bend at the knee at two joints. It's actually very good for an older kit. You can get almost a complete 180. And <clears throat> the ankle armor is molded into the leg, so it's on a ball joint. You get a little bit of swivel side to side, a little bit front and back, and you can get a little bit of twisting and turning here. Okay, on the backpack, the large wing has a hinge here, and it can rotate at that base. 
a hinge here which will go back and forth and can rotate there and the smaller wings have a swivel and a hinge here so they'll turn go in and out and there's another hinge here and they'll go up pretty far okay so for accessories let me get his wings down he is very back heavy and uh, these older joint systems just don't support it very well um, for accessories he's got the two open palm hands and these are just polycap hands they're uh, molded right on the polycap runner two trigger finger hands two closed fists two beam sabers and these are molded um, all as one piece and I, I layered the uh, the clear green on a little thick <clears throat> didn't thin it quite enough so they're not quite solid but they're not as light colored as I would appreciate them to be and the twin buster rifle and the handles are stored inside like that and he has one on each side if I can get it out there we go and of course the buster rifle splits into two okay so for holding any weapons it's pretty simple swap out the hands That's strange. His uh, left holding hand is very loose for some reason. I don't know why. It's kind of just wobbling around in there. I'll have to look at that later. But um, he holds his beam sabers just fine. And if you put the twin buster rifle back together. and fold up one of the handles and it's pretty light it's not a super complicated mold each half is just um, each rifle is just two halves with the handle inserted between so he has no problem holding it you know straight out like that One final accessory that a lot of the Endless Waltz high grades had in this scale was an extra torso. This one here, and it's bent over so he can do the final shot uh, pose that he does in the OVA. And to use that, you will have to pop off the head. Carefully pull off the arms. really tight. That uh, chrome plating really adds some friction. As with the backpack. One moment. We'll have this popped off. There we are. Okay. So pop on the bent torso. Put the head on first here. One arm, 
and the other arm. Kind of get him into position before I put the shoulders on. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll just leave this hand on here for now. It should be fine. And then we pop the backpack back on. You can see he's bent over quite a bit, so you know, if you get a decent stand on him, if I had a uh, action base too, I could show you a little bit better, but you know, it looks uh, pretty nice. Leaned over, ready to fire. Um, on this guy, I did quite a bit of painting, actually. <clears throat> um, seeing as he was molded, you know, in the clear plastic and the metallic paint, I wanted to keep it as close to that motif as possible. So that involved the use of a lot of clear paint with silver undercoating or gold undercoating. Let me get him all back together here. I'm going to leave his backpack off just for simplicity's sake so I can show a bit more of the details. Okay, we'll start with the head. Um, I painted the eyes and forehead camera and mohawk camera here because uh, he's got two cameras on one on top of the other. Uh, with a silver base and put clear green over that. Um, silver for the chin, clear red over that. And then around the eyes I put uh, clear smoke. Um, the collar is supposed to be white there. just went ahead and painted it silver. Um, and if you're painting over the chrome enamel paint will, will come off after too much handling, so it's already trying to come off a little bit there. Um, the chest falcons, or the um, gatlings here, uh, silver with clear smoke over them to kind of darken them up and distinguish them from the normal silver. Uh, silver and clear blue on the circles here. Um, gold with... I thought I put clear yellow over that, but I don't think I did. It doesn't look very yellow to me. Could have been something I missed in the painting. Um, silver for the bottom of the torso. Silver with clear green for the chest. Um, silver with clear blue here and here. Silver with clear red. And silver on the feet where it should be white. Uh, the sights here and on the arm silver with clear green and these fins here on the arm came silver on the back so I put clear red on the back there so yeah their coating wasn't a hundred percent on some of the runners it was just sort of halfway done and I didn't have to do any painting on the backpack So this kit has been kind of a nice walk down memory lane, uh, like most Americans that are Gundam fans. Um, started with Gundam Wing, and uh, you know after Wing aired, they aired Endless Waltz on Toonami, and they released the kits for that. And I think this is my fourth time building the Wing Zero Custom uh, kit here. Uh, yeah, because I, I remember I, I built one of each, and then I practiced battle damage on them horribly, and then I built another one of each, and I think one of my Wing Zeros broke, so I had to get a new one. And, uh, yeah, so this would be number four. Uh, not to be the last, though, because I love this kit, and I will probably build it at least one more time. Um, the posability is decent. The age of the kit certainly shows. Um, especially if you're into the newer high grades that have, you know, the plastic covers with the, over the joints and, um, you know, hands that are 
plastic molded as you know one or more part, two or more parts. Um, but it's I think it's a good kit overall. Um, like I said, it definitely shows its age, but uh, you know, old but gold, as they say. Anyway, uh, until next time, guys. Happy building, and I will see you all at the next review.